welcome to another edition of Real Estate Investor Talk. I'm sitting here with Dr. Christo Visa. Dr. Visa, thank you very much for the, for the opportunity. So as a business doctor, I mean, you started here in South Africa, particularly in the, in the retail sector. Yeah. You've now expanded into multiple different businesses. Just tell us a little bit about that journey, where it started from the PEPCO uh, to where you are today and, and how you've sort of evolved into various companies yeah well I, you know i think again it, there's all there's a personal evolution when you start in a small town the way we did way back in upington uh, your initial ambitions are perhaps to be one of the most successful business people in upington then you move to cape town and suddenly there's a much bigger world and as the business evolves and grows you start feeling but you know if I can make it in Uppington then I can make it in Cape Town if I can make it in Cape Town then maybe I can make it in the UK or wherever and uh, business ultimately is something that a lot of people don't seem to grasp is business in essence is opportunistic right. you've got to be in the arena got to look for opportunities and then try and capitalize on those opportunities. But nobody, when he starts out, yeah. has a magic blueprint. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to do the following. Doesn't work that way. Today we see a lot of companies, all of a sudden, because of the RAND dollar and the devaluation of the RAND, yeah. all of a sudden they're looking offshore. South Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa, both at the moment going through a dip, Right. Our philosophy is we keep investing throughout the dip. Right. And in our South African businesses, we continue to open stores, 100 plus every year, and we continue to create a net 10,000 new jobs every year wow. within our region. So it's not as if we're going out of South Africa or Africa and neglecting our home base. Mm -hmm. I mean, far from it. Yes. And we are, in fact, looking at some interesting opportunities at the moment. So I think, Dr. Visi, you've also been a bit outspoken about government because in some cases, maybe tell us a little bit about that because obviously, you know, there's been a lot of concerns, you know, about what's happened at government, sure. in particular, you know, sure. the firing of the finance minister, etc. Yeah, I know. Well, look, one, of, one of the sad developments in South Africa, which is a development to the detriment of everybody, is that over the last number of years uh, there has been an almost total disconnect between business and government. Somebody in my position constantly is confronted with do you get into the political arena? Mm -hmm. For myself it's perfectly clear. I have to choose whether I'm a politician mm -hmm. or a businessman. I can't be both. Sure. Therefore, I will not get involved in ideological stroke political debates. Right. But here and there, I and many other business people are starting to raise their voices to say, look, this has got nothing to do with ideology. This is just simple pragmatism. We can make things work better mm -hmm. uh, if we shed the ideological baggage. For instance, state-owned enterprises has been by and large a disaster. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness for those that are well run yeah. by government appointees, but they are far in the minority. Mm -hmm. So what business is now doing is stepping up to the plate and saying to government, we will second people to help with the governments and with the business-like decisions in those state-owned enterprises. It seems a great ideal, but in practical terms, is it, is, can we move, is it possible? It's got to be possible. Yeah. And you know, uh, there's an old saying, if I remember it correctly, that necessity is the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. When you're facing strong headwinds, mm -hmm. such as we are currently facing in this country, mm -hmm. it does make people at least ask the question, Right. But are we on the right track? Yes. Why? How did we land in this situation? Now, we all concede that there is an international climate, 
a downturn in commodity prices et al. Mm. Uh, about which South Africa can do precious little. Mm. But there are far too many things that we do wrong that exacerbate these headwinds right. or the effects thereof. Mm -hmm. What's keeping you awake at night, Dr. Visa? Absolutely nothing. I understand that <coughs> South Africa and Africa, for that matter, like all other countries and regions in the world, will have its ups and downs. We've seen it mm. and we've come through much worse. So there's nothing that keeps me awake. I remain a very positive South African mm -hmm. and African. Mm -hmm. I believe our time has come, but at the end of the day, it will depend on ourselves how quickly we get to where we should be. Right. And for myself, I decided years ago that uh, in order to plan my life, I have to ask myself the question, do I believe that South Africans are good people or not? Because if South Africans are not good people, then it's not a good country to bring up my children mm -hmm. and tell them to make their future. So sure. I'm firmly of the view that South Africa can rightly claim that it has good people. And if you look at our history, particularly over the last 20, 25 years, you can see it. And I honestly believe that, and I act accordingly. Well, Dr. Visa, that's very encouraging. Can you give, probably give some advice to entrepreneurs? What, what, if there's one piece of advice for somebody who's an entrepreneur, who's running his own business, that kind of thing, you know, what advice would you give? Very simple. I get asked that question very often. Right. People say, you know, what is the magic? What is the silver bullet? Mm. The silver bullet, very, mm. very, very simply, mm. a four-letter word spelled W-O-R-K. Mm. If mm. you work, right. you will succeed. It's been wonderful chatting to you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.